And tonight we are featuring AMA Waterways, focusing on river cruising in Europe. My name is Lisa Amflick. I am one of the consultants at Expedia Cruises. And tonight's talk is being hosted by the six Edmonton and vicinity stores. And we're bringing you these travel talks to inspire you and to give you ideas for future vacations. If you have not been on a Zoom call before, everybody has entered muted. There is a chat box if you do have any questions. You do have the ability to have your camera on or off. I have to tell you, we'd love to see your faces. So if you feel comfortable and it doesn't matter if you're in, a, in, in your pajamas, we'd love to have you turn your cameras off. All right, we are now in 2021 and later on this year and definitely into 2022, travel is going to begin again. I don't know about you, but this is the longest that I, my passport has not been used. My suitcase is gathering dust and I am so desperate to have a vacation. Um, the last 13 months, 12 months has been very difficult for all of us. I think we feel cooped up, we feel bored. And I think like many of us, we can't wait to get out there and see the world. Travel fulfills us, that's why we do it. And I know you've been missing it too. So that's why we're running these travel talks to keep you uh, informed on what's happening in the industry and to give you things to get excited about. Our Expedia offices are open right now due to the restrictions of COVID, we are asking that you either call or email to make appointments so that we can make sure that we can follow the, pro uh, the COVID protocols. Our vacation specialists are here to help you plan your bucket list and also to help you navigate because when travel starts again, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated than it has been before. So now without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our special guest, Shauna Carter, Business Development Manager of Alma Waterways, who is coming to us from her home in Kelowna. So welcome, Shauna. Hi, thank you, Lisa. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Yes. Hi, Captain Tony and all of you. I've seen lots of familiar faces. And like Lisa, I am my suitcase is at the door ready to go as soon as I can and not even just international travel. I'm, uh, you know, anxious to get back to Alberta and come into Edmonton and see everybody again and be able to talk to you one on one. So thank you for letting me join you this evening. You're welcome, Shauna. I have to say you probably are one of the most knowledgeable people that I know about river cruising because I think you told me you have done 22 Ama Waterways River Cruises. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very, very lucky because, you know, I've been in travel. This is my 41st year, believe it or not. Yes, I started when I was 10. And uh, I have spent the last just over 10 years with Ama Waterways. And I've been fortunate enough to do all our itineraries. Africa, I did Myanmar when we were there. Uh, the Mekong, I'm doing Egypt in April, and of course, all the incredible Europe itineraries. So, you know, it's become my passion traveling around Europe and, and seeing how much more I can explore and discover. Wonderful. So just to clarify to everybody, it is AMA Waterways, not AMA, and you're not connected to AMA in any way, shape or form. Um, <laughs> Shauna, tell us a little bit about, because your product might be new to some of the um, participants that we have uh, with us tonight. So who is AMA Waterways? Well, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Good question, because I know a lot of you know about us because you've come to the Expedia shows in Edmonton and I've had the chance to talk with you one-on-one, -on -one, but some of you might be new to river cruising and perhaps new to AMA Waterways. And we are actually a um, family owned company. We've been in business since 2002. And we were founded by these three incredible families, Rudy Schreiner, Christine Karst, and actually Gary's dad, Jimmy Murphy. And they are all from Europe. And, you know, they really have this wonderful vision of what they wanted North Americans to experience when they came on the rivers. And so they started their own company. But Rudy's really known as the godfather of river cruising because, you know, if you know the other top American lines, you know, Uniworld, he started river cruising for them. And he's the one that actually started the Douro River Cruise in Portugal. And then he went on to open Viking River Cruises for North America. 
then Avalon Waterways, and then as I say, 2002, they decided to uh, start their own company. So a wealth of knowledge, Rudy's also an architect by trade. So he does a lot of our ship design and uh, these three families are so involved day in, day out. And when you have great people at the top, it just trickles all the way down. Shauna, I, um, I want to say that I was very, very happy to hear that Alma Waterways was able to sail successfully last summer. They were the only river cruise line. So can you tell us a little bit about that and where we are now? What's happening in the industry for you? Yes, well, as you all know, you know, travel has been restricted. Uh, at this time, we are currently suspended until the end of April. And we are eagerly awaiting uh, the green light, so to speak, so that we can return to river cruising. And of course, once travel restrictions are lifted and people are getting their vaccinations and we have our advisories from all the countries and such, then we'll begin sailing again. But as you said, Lisa, last year, we were the only uh, North American river line that was actually sailing. And obviously North Americans weren't able to come over, but we were able to work with a great tour operator in Germany. And so from July of 2020, all the way through till November of 2020, we were able to have 1500 guests sail with us on the Rhine and we didn't have one issue. So it was really wonderful for us to be able to welcome people on board. It was great for our crew too. And then also, you know, sort of see how things worked out and, you know, how we were gonna be masked and, you know, doing, you know, touchless temperature checks and then health questionnaires and having um, you know, hand sanitization stations and such, which we, we've always had. So that's really, uh, you know, the hand sanitizers and stuff. That's nothing new for us. But just how did we work it with the guests on board? And we asked them to wear masks as they were walking around the ship. But once they were outside or on the sun deck or in the forward lounge sitting down or in the dining room or, of course, in their stateroom, they were able to take their masks off. Now the crew, of course, were staying in masks the entire time and you can see them there. And what was even better is that everything that we offer, all our incredible choices, whether it's afternoon tea or late night snacks or all the meals in the dining room or the chef's table, everything was served to the guests. So they were very, very pampered. Um, and you can see them sitting in the lounge here. They were able to sort of social distance and, and yet still, you know, talk to the, to the other guests on board. So, and of course, coming up top to the beautiful sun deck where you're going to take in those beautiful views of either side of the river. So that was really wonderful for us. Uh, we probably will start with them again, hopefully in May. And we're really hopeful to be able to start sailing this summer. But as I say, we will when it's safe to do so. Okay, thank you, Shauna. That's great information. So I think everybody knows the river cruise industry is one of the largest, the fastest growing part of the cruise industry. And there are many companies uh, that, that do river cruising. Tell us a little bit about Alma Waterways, how you are different. What, what do you do different than some of the other cruise lines that uh, separates and differentiates you? Well, you know, when it came to river cruising, as I say, Rudy and Christine, of course, being European and having this incredible vision of what they wanted our guests to experience on board, uh, I think one of our greatest differences was really just under promising and over delivering. And so the guests know what to expect when they're coming on board, but there's so many more surprises and delights that take place that they don't even know about that they just are always every day having that aha moment. And, you know, what I what I really love about river cruising and, and as you say, Lisa, we are seeing this huge surge, which probably really comes from the fact that we're right in the destination, we're always in the countries we're traveling through, we're minutes away from shore. Um, and when you arrive at the ship, you know, our ships at max capacity only carry 160 guests, 
except for our one beautiful Emma Magna, who's twice as large, but only still carries 190. And, you know, they come to the ship, their, their luggage is taken and sanitized and delivered to their staterooms. They can unpack, they can come anytime they want during the day, there's no time restrictions. You know, they get up on the top deck, they have a drink, they maybe stroll into town before it's time for our welcome party. And so really they're not spending all their holiday time, you know, trying to find where to go for dinner or what tours to take. We're gonna let them know exactly everything that's available to them day after day. Uh, and of course, um, you know, all the dining and everything. So you really get to double your leisure time, which is so important. And people are so excited to get away that they just want to get there and really start enjoying their holiday right away. Another uh, wonderful thing with Alma Waterways is that we have these cruise managers on board our ships and he or she is there for our guests the entire um, journey of the cruise, you know, time of the cruise, but also before and after, you know, we are visiting some of these incredible uh, rivers, but there's so many wonderful cities that aren't necessarily on the rivers, you know, for example, Barcelona or Prague, Istanbul, Madrid, Lisbon, the list goes on and on. And we offer these wonderful pre and post land packages just to wrap around these beautiful river experiences. And the cruise managers are with the guests from the beginning of that package. So they meet them at the hotel, they have a welcome party that night, they do breakfast every morning, they're on the city tours. And then when it's time to go to the ship, they transfer with the guests. And those guests that take those pre and post, by the time they get to the ship, they're kind of like, this is our person because they know them. They've been together a few days. And then of course, traveling with, with the guests on the ship, making sure they know exactly every day, you know, cause it's, even I do it. Sometimes I'm like, Monica, where are we going tomorrow? And she has to remind me and, okay, which tour should I take? Which one's the best one? And just, you know, they do an outstanding job. And then again, at the end of the cruise, if our guests are traveling onwards to another city with us, then they travel with them again. So it creates this incredible bond uh, with our guests. But then there's also our incredible, you know, team, our crew on board, our dining staff, our waiting staff, or pardon me, our bartending staff our naval officers and our captain, the cruise managers, all our tour guides, they just, you know, do a wonderful job. And I, you know, I know everybody says that, but they really do be, become part of your family and, and they want to know everything about you. I'm always amazed at how quickly they know your name. They know what drinks you like, you know, if you're diabetic or celiac or something, we've already notified the maitre d', but they all know. And it's wonderful that, you know, they take an interest and really look after our guests while they're on board. And then of course, there's our beautiful ships. You know, we were the first to come out, as I say, Rudy's an architect, so he does these incredible innovations. But, you know, we came out with our beautiful twin balcony ships. We have our French balcony ships. So creating, you know, lots of comfort and luxury on board the ship. Uh, and also, you know, space, making it easy for the guests with everything there, bathrobes, slippers, bathroom amenities, you've got Wi-Fi in every stateroom with an actual Apple monitor and, and you know, keyboard, Wi-Fi throughout the ship, which is, of course, is complimentary. And, you know, that's, that's a big thing for a lot of people. They want to make sure they can, you know, stay connected. And an interesting tip, you know, little bit of information is that we actually spend more money on Wi-Fi than we do on fuel. <laughs> and that's the truth. So, but, you know, also in the, at the same time, recognizing that we want to be sustainable, we want to protect the environment, and all of our Europe ships were awarded the Green Award, which recognizes that. Um, you know, we have great staterooms, everything from, you know, solo staterooms to lovely window staterooms, French balcony, twin balcony. We even have connecting staterooms on some of our ships. We know today that so many families, multi-generational families are wanting to travel together. 
especially after being separated for so long. Sometimes it's grandparents and you know older children and then their children, friends, whatever it might be. And so you know, we have these wonderful opportunities because most ships don't, they won't have connecting staterooms. Uh, we also have third and fourth capability, third and fourth capability on some of the ships. So lots of choices when it comes to the staterooms and really it's, you know, it's however you like to travel. Um, our swimming pools on our ships, you know, that, that's not necessarily standard fitness center uh, and all the amenities. Now, you know, if you love, casinos and 27 shows and all of that. You're just never gonna find that on a river cruise. These ships are just too small, right? They're long and narrow and built for these rivers so that they can navigate under the bridges and go through the locks. But one of our greatest differences really is all our tour choices. And, you know, every day you have anywhere from two to six choices and whether it's walking tours with different activity levels so gentle walking active walking a late riser for those lazy bones who can't get out there at nine o'clock um, we have these incredible walking tours and you've got your audio box box it's a little one ear piece and you can see them around the neck of the guests there in the tour guide and you tap the lollipop and you're connected. So I took this picture actually on my last cruise. So that was a year and a bit ago now. And you can see they were already small groups. That's part of what we were doing, but now that becomes even more important. Um, and on top of that, you know, biking, we carry all our bikes. We were the first to have bikes on all our Europe ships, except in Portugal, because it's all hills in Portugal, but, um, you know, you've got bikes, you can go on your own, you can go with guides, you've got hiking, we do some really great hikes, and we have, you know, gentle hikes and more advanced hikes. And then we have a wellness host as well on our ships, all, all our Europe ships, that's, you know, he or she's hosting yoga, stretching, there's about four to five classes a day, and of course, they're all included. And what better way to get up in the morning and go into the lounge or up top and, you know, do some stretching and start your day. It's a, it's a great way to work out the kinks, especially if you've been flying and, and traveling. And then it comes to, you know, what we're offering for dining and for drinks. And with Alma Waterways, wine is a huge part of what we're doing. You know, not only do we have wonderful wine on all our cruises, we actually have 60, over 60 wine hosts every year that come and join us from North America and they're bringing their wine as well. And so wine's a big thing for us. We, we have an incredible wine cruise program. So when you're on board with us, you know, we want you to try these incredible varietals from all the different countries and areas that we're visiting. And so we change the red and whites every day. So you get to try all these you know, different varietals and you'll have, you know, beer at lunch and dinner, wine at lunch and dinner included as much as you like. We have a sip and sail cocktail party every day for an hour before dinner. You can have a martini or a wine or a beer. And it's really nice because when you've been out all day touring and you come back to the ship, you know, the guests really enjoy that time or they get a drink and they go to their stateroom or they might go up top onto the sun deck and just watch if we're you know, we might be sailing at that point, or we might just be still docked and they can just, you know, take in the scenery. Um, so, you know, you've got all of those things included and all your coffees and bottled water and such. So um, that's what happens in terms of, you know, all the beverages. And then we have our dining, which we win awards for every year. And a nice thing with us as well is not only do we have all the, you know, our beautiful dining rooms with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, different choices every day, fish, vegetarian meats, and everything is fresh, nothing is ever frozen. But we also have our alternative dining venue, which is the chef's table. And so if you're used to ocean cruising, you know, a lot of those alternative dining venues have a service charge, and ours is complimentary. So you just book it on board the ship. And it's a five course tasting menu, completely different than the, the dining room and very, very nice. And we can, you know, cater to all dietary needs if you're celiac, what have you. It's not a problem for us in Europe. And they, as I said earlier, they do an amazing job. And then of course, after 
a full day of touring and a happy hour and then dinner. It's really wonderful to come into the lounge and on a couple of nights of the cruise, maybe four or five, uh, we'll have local entertainment that will come to the ship. And, you know, it could be dancers, it might be singers or musicians and you know what a beautiful way to end your evening and then for those who like to stay up late you can stay in the forward lounge have a, some more drinks do some dancing our policy is the bar and the lounge doesn't close till everybody goes to bed <laughs> so sometimes i know lisa i've sailed with you uh we've been up <laughs> well i've sailed with a, quite a few of you actually <laughs> and uh we we've closed that quite late so you know so much to do so much to see and as I say, all these things, but even so much more that I couldn't even tell you about. And I don't want to, because you got to have some, some surprises left. Well, thank you for sharing all of that. Now, tell us, I look at this map and it's like all these wonderful, beautiful cities. Shauna, will you go through some of the itineraries and some of the highlights of those itineraries? Yes, this is, um, I love this map because it really gives you a sense of how much of Europe you can travel through on the rivers. You know, when I used to sail by ocean, which I love ocean cruising, but when I'd sail by ocean, I really thought I'd covered a lot of Europe until I started going on the rivers. And I was like, wow, I haven't even seen most of this country. So, you know, you've got Portugal, the, uh, the Douro in Portugal. If you look at my cursor down here, you've got France with, you know, five different rivers and itineraries there. You have the Netherlands up here, which is, sorry, which is even, um, you know, something altogether different because when you're in the Netherlands and Belgium, you're not even on the rivers. You're on the waterways of Holland and Belgium. And then you have the very traditional Rhine River that comes out of Amsterdam and sails down uh, to Basel, just at the top of Switzerland there. Now, or of course you can go in the opposite direction. You have the Moselle, look at this little snaky river here. Beautiful, probably the most beautiful river in Europe. Then you come through on the Maine, looks like Maine, but it's Maine. And then through the Maine Danube Canal, which opened in 1992 and connected the Rhine to the Danube. So then you could sail from the North Sea all the way to the Black Sea. It's 106 miles long with 16 locks. So it's also an incredible um, engineering feat. And at the center of the Mine Danube Canal, it's called the Continental Divide. It's the highest point above sea level in Europe. Now you can come along here and you turn into the Danube and there's the upper Danube and there's the lower Danube. So as you move down here to Budapest, that's what we refer to as the upper Danube. And then the longest part of any cruise is going from Budapest down below here to Giurgiu, just below Bucharest. And the Danube is actually the longest river as well. It's 2,850 kilometers, so, and through eight countries. So you can see you've got lots, lots of choices. Now, I'm just gonna very quickly sort of highlight the rivers and show you a few photos, because there's about, 35 itineraries <laughs> and I could have you here forever. So I'll just give you some of the highlights. But as I mentioned, we are up in Holland and Belgium. And this is a really special area. It's a really beautiful way to come and see this part of Europe. And of course, um, you know, tulips, tulip time is very special over in Holland. And the tulip time cruises run, it's a very short window. They're just basically the end of March to the beginning of May. And yet you have this wonderful time in Amsterdam. You get to see all the wonderful tulips. You get a little taste of Belgium going into Antwerp and Ghent and into Bruges. On this itinerary, you don't go into Brussels. And then you've got Rotterdam and Delft. You know, Delft is the China, the beautiful China that comes from there, Harlem, Zandam, the Kukunov area for the tulip gardens, of course, and so much more. Middleburg is where all the, the waterworks are, you know, the big giant electronic dam they built to control those waterways and such. And then the Best of Holland cruise runs May to October. And I'm so glad we, we this was new for us in 21 that we did this across the summer as well. 
And now you get a little bit more of, of Belgium by being able to add in Brussels and um, also more time in Amsterdam. And you can actually back either one of those up to a Rhine cruise as well and see Holland, Belgium, and then, you know, take the, the Rhine cruise. So Amsterdam, known as the Venice of the North, it's a beautiful city, all the canals all around. And, um, you know, if you've never been to Amsterdam, I really recommend you come in early. There's a lot to see, you know, the Rijksmuseum, Anne Frank's house, so many things. And you can book your museum uh, tickets online in advance. And that way, when you come on your holiday, you've got your tickets, you're not spending your time waiting in line or not getting tickets at all. So do spend some extra time if you've never been and um, come in for a few days before or stay a few, few days after. There's the beautiful tulip fields and the windmills, of course, which are famous for this area. I'm just showing you some of the highlights. Bruges, one of my, um, you know, very favorite cities there. It's kind of like a little medieval fairy tale place. And uh, of course, in Belgium, that's where you try all those wonderful chocolates and the beer and also Belgian fries because they weren't actually French. They are from Belgium. <laughs> so there's a big fight between the French and the Belgium over who started the French fry, but their fries are very good. Now, after that, we can look at the Rhine and the Mine and the Moselle. Beautiful rivers, lots of castles. So this is really where you're gonna get those vineyards and the castles and uh, some of those very historic uh, cities. This map just kind of gives you a, a bird's eye view. You can see the Rhine here going down to Basel. So you come out of Holland and then you have France and Germany nestled, you know, you're nestled between and then Switzerland at the bottom. The Moselle is here. It's that very little snaky river that I mentioned earlier that, oh, I love. You have to go on the Moselle, it's so beautiful. Lots of vineyards here, very famous wines, especially the whites, of course, come from this area and, uh, and more castles. And then the mine is over here. So that's when you leave the Rhine and head out to the mine, Danube Canal to head to um, the Danube. So you'd see Amsterdam, of course, but also Cologne with the beautiful Cologne Cathedral at one time, a very long time ago, considered one of the tallest structures in Europe and a lot of history attached to this area. The beautiful Rhine River Gorge, you know, we spend typically three quarters of a day sailing through this area. There's castle after castle after castle, and the cruise manager will be giving you, you know, a commentary on, okay, this is the castle of so-and-so and, -so and, and, you know, all the history. And then, you know, sometimes there's a, just some scenic viewing. So the cruise manager will say, okay, everybody get ready, get your cameras. We're coming up on another castle. And we have a map too for you. That's a a castle map so you can you know follow along and not miss any of these beautiful castles Strasbourg in France this lovely city with all these half timbered homes um, the, the most quaint uh, city when you get into the old center of town the Christmas markets here are amazing and the city just goes crazy with decorations and uh, so really a lovely spot and then Basel and there's so much more but these are just some of the highlights of course in the main cities uh, along this river. Now Basel itself is a beautiful city but after you finish a Rhine cruise you have the opportunity to go with us over to Lucerne and Zurich and beautiful cities not far away at all uh, at Christmas even more beautiful I love and having you got to have cheese fondue when you go to Lucerne and so much more but new this year we added if you can believe it Italy so if you do a Rhine cruise with us you can you know start or end in Basel depending on which direction you're going but before or after you can take uh, a journey with us, go through the Swiss Alps and then through the longest tunnel over into Lake Como area. This happens to be the little town of Bellagio. I love this little town. And Como Lake sits at the very bottom of, of uh, Lake Como. And then, uh, so we'll go exploring around the lake and we'll spend three nights here. And you can, like me, try and find George Clooney. So 
I didn't find George, but I found his house, but I didn't find George, but very, very beautiful. So these are the things you can add on to cruises, you know, once you've, you've done your river cruise. So um, I wanted to mention, just in case anybody loves flowers or plants or, you know, wants to know more about gardening and such, there's a giant world, and I mean giant world expo called the Floriad. It only takes place every 10 years. And so 2020 got moved to 2022. So any cruise you take that starts or ends in Amsterdam will take you to the Floriad. And it's not just an exposition. There's rides, there's a big cable car, there's pavilions and music and food and everything you could ever want to know about plants and flowers and the ecosystem, everything. So it's, it's quite special. So we have that too. The Moselle River, as I mentioned, my fave. This is the beautiful Moselle curve. But look at those vineyards. I mean, they literally plant vineyards on every available piece of soil. So it's really lovely. And Kokum Castle, uh, Burn Castle, these are all places you could see along the Moselle. Coming over on the mine to head towards the Mine Danube Canal. Again, um, a really lovely area and you come into some very interesting places like mines where the beautiful cathedral is with Marc Chagall's windows. You know, he was a Russian painter and put these beautiful stained glass windows throughout this church. And also, you know, the Gutenberg Museum where the Gutenberg printing press was um, you know, all that history for when they were printing the Bible, the first Bible. So lots of great history there. Bamberg, a UNESCO uh, town, city, uh, known for its smoky beer because many years ago they had a huge fire and all the beer got smoked out and then they created smoky beer. So from these tragedies comes some new history and stuff. So very interesting, Rottenberg. Uh, you know, look at the, the lovely houses. And, you know, one of the things I find really interesting when you move through Europe, you'll notice all these houses are really skinny at the bottom and then they get fat at the top. And people are like, why do they build like that? And it's because of the taxes. They're taxed on the square footage of their foundation. So they make it small and then they go big at the top. So you'll always see these kind of colored homes and such. France, of course, as I mentioned, five beautiful itineraries where you're you know, starting or ending for the most part, many times in the beautiful city of Paris. Who doesn't love going to Paris? And, uh, you know, you can do beaches of Normandy. And of course, for our Canadian guests, we go to the Canadian beaches. This is Omaha Beach, but we do go Canadian Beach, Canadian Cemetery, uh, the, the um, Canadian War Museum and such. So that's a big part of that journey, of course. And the art history, seeing uh, Monet's gardens. And you may or may not know, but Vincent van Gogh, he actually uh, lived at the end of his life in Auvers-Souar. This is a little town on the Seine, uh, and he is actually buried there. So on, on that itinerary on the Seine, there is a lot of art history, not so much wine. There's apples, calvados, lots of uh, cheese, like 240 different types of cheeses. And we have wonderful stays here, new this year, St. Malo and visiting Mont Saint-Michel. So a three night package in the Brittany region of France, which is so beautiful and has sort of a lot of history back to buccaneer pirate days and such, but there's Mont Saint-Michel with that beautiful abbey and um, you know the town around it. And then the tide goes out two or three times a day, like 40 feet and creates this wet bed of land and then all the water comes up again. So very beautiful. Coming over to the Rhone and the Saone for the beautiful Burgundy Beaujolais, Chateauneuf de Pop, this, these wonderful wine regions uh, where you can see Provence and all the wonderful cities uh, along this river, including Arles, which is one of my favorites. And it's always interesting to me as we move through some of these countries, all the Roman history and the architectures like the the Pont de Gard out of Avion, which is well, you know, what remains of the Roman aqueducts that were built through France. And here you can see the amphitheater down below and of course the, the Colosseum there and so much incredible history. Avion, one of the few remaining walled cities of Europe, the original papal palace in the background there and what remains of the Avion bridge. 
Leon, who doesn't want to go there? It's a gastronomical delight. Uh, beautiful, beautiful city. And um, cruises, some of the cruises start or end here in this city. And then we've got packages where you can go to Barcelona, you can go to Geneva, extend that even farther. Uh, and in 2023, we're going to add in this beautiful Monaco and Nice package where you'll even go up and see that beautiful little town of Ez up on the mountaintop. So, so much to do. Bordeaux, the king of wine country with Bordeaux wines. Also, the um, Cognac region is here, and Cognac, of course. And the lovely white Sauternes wines, a little bit sweeter, but lovely. So and a gorgeous city. So even if you're not a wine lover, so much history here. You're docked right here in the heart of the city. And then we go off and explore this beautiful countryside with all these lovely chateaus. So in France, they call wineries chateaus and in Portugal, they call them quintas. So the, the name changes as you go along. And with, with um, Bordeaux, you can do a beautiful four night package in Bilbao, there's the Guggenheim Museum there that we include in our tour, and also going into beautiful San Sebastian. So again, why not go? And then after Bordeaux, we have a beautiful package that goes through the Loire Valley on your way up to Paris. So lots and lots of choices. Now, speaking of all those pre and post land packages for France, right now till the end of March, we are including most of those packages for free if you book a cruise. So it will end at the end of March. We extended it one more month, but it's incredible value. And what better way to enhance your holiday than to add on you know, a, a land stay there. So now we move to the Danube, as I mentioned, one of the longest river areas in Europe. And you can see the Danube starts as soon as you come through the Main Danube Canal. You're on to the Danube as you come all the way down into Jurju. That's as far as you go, because after that, it's a very industrial sort of area. You don't sail uh, past that area, but so many opportunities. So you've got your very beautiful Danube itinerary with you know iconic cities like Vienna and Bratislava and Budapest. And then you have the Southeast area of the Danube known as the Jams. And this is a very different part of Europe, a little bit more war-torn, but with a very different history. And you have places like Transylvania to go to Dracula's castle and, and visit Bucharest and, and also sail through the Iron Gates. So that just gives you a sort of a detailed view there of um, you know that particular itinerary. But look at all those countries you can travel through. That would be, if you did both, it would be 14 nights or you can do them independently seven nights. And Budapest, you know, this is a very iconic shot of Budapest. You know, you sail in or out on the Danube and you've got on the parliament side, the Buddha side of the city and up on the other side, you can see the hill that's known as uh, um, Gellert Hill. And uh, that statue right here, it's this beautiful woman and she's sort of got these things behind her like wings or something. And it's called the freedom statue, the liberty statue representing all the people that fought for freedom for Hungary and independence. And that's the Pest side of Buddha, just the most incredible city. So again, you must spend extra time in Budapest. And there's just looking back the other way. Bratislava in Slovakia, another wonderful city. And we always go into the old part of cities. You know, we don't go into the newer sections because they're just newer cities. But the old town is where all the history is, like Napoleon. And then you can go up to the castle and you can hike up there. And, and then we come into Vienna. These are just some of the stops along the way uh, where you take in, you know, all the history of the Habsburgs and, and so much more. Dernstein, one of my favorite little towns. Look at how beautiful that is. I actually have this picture from when we were all, my, our sales team, on the Danube last, not this last January, but before. And it was January. And look at that beautiful blue sky and this lovely little town. It's just amazing. Iron Gates, as I mentioned, as you come through that gorge, there's King Decebulus up on the 
uh, on the hill. And this is sort of dividing Serbia and Romania, this natural uh, path that's dividing uh, with this gorge. It's a very, very deep part of the Danube. And the Danube is actually the deepest river in Europe. So it can go anywhere from like, you know, 10 feet to 128 feet, which is quite, quite unusual. And then we come down and see so much, but just, you know, there's a highlight Belogradchik, uh, you know, fortress, which was built in between this incredible rock formation and uh, so much more. Now, look at this building. Uh, you know, if you get off the ship and you go and do a Bucharest post or pre-stay with us and go to Transylvania for the castle and everything, you'll see this building even if you don't go on our land package. But this is a, it's like a government administrative building. It's the second largest building of its kind in the world next to the Pentagon. It's huge. So, you know, really, really interesting. Portugal, I mentioned this, my fave, I did this cruise with Lisa. We were fortunate enough to go and drink all that beautiful wine and port and seat. Look at this lovely valley. So peaceful and quiet as you come through and you see all the quintas and the vineyards and of course, port. This is the whole river is a UNESCO area because of the port being grown in this area. So you can do a one-way cruise, you can do a round trip cruise, you can add in Lisbon and Madrid, so much to do in this beautiful area. And I just wanna quickly point out um, what's coming for 2023, very exciting for Europe. We're gonna be adding a beautiful, so this is 2023. Yes, we have all our cruises till the end of 2023. We have this beautiful music themed cruise can you imagine going into the Budap Budapest Opera House, which I have been in, onto the stage, hearing somebody sing, going behind the stage, walking through the halls and such. So really lovely. Milk Abbey, a must when you do the Danube, the Salzburg excursion, a Vienna concert, so much more. So if you love music and adding on a brand new three night package in Krakow, Poland, we have a new five night cruise coming for the Danube. So Budapest, Bratislava, Vienna, the real highlights, capital cities of the Danube and staying fairly close together. So you can do those Salzburg extensions going to Krakow, which is a little ways away. It's about a seven hour journey away, but it's so beautiful. So that will be coming. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll have an actual full-on Salzburg extension. We do visit Salzburg on our Danube itineraries. It's included as a tour, but if you want to spend more time, you can do it after. And as I say, Krakow will be coming and we'll have an Auschwitz visit and such. So very, very interesting. And I mentioned the Nice and Monaco package, but I have to just tell you because we're getting short on time, um, the Seven River Journey. So we just announced this two weeks ago. Oh my gosh, it's gone crazy. A first ever Seven Rivers, 14 countries, um, four different ships and 47 days. So it starts on June 1st in Paris in 2023, and it ends in Jurju. Uh, as I mentioned, Jurju is just under Bucharest in July. So this amazing epic journey and uh, so much is included. There's so much to tell you with this beautiful cruise, but um, I think the best thing to do is reach out to your Expedia Cruises consultant and then you know I can even share more with you after if you're interested we can have a one-on-one -on -one call with your consultant and I can really tell you all the details but there's so much to say but anyway that's just a teaser and uh, if you're interested please do reach out you can see the pricing is really reasonable I think for 47 days through these rivers on these beautiful little ships can you imagine no more than 146 guests will take this entire journey across these countries on these ships with one cruise manager it'll just be amazing now if you are looking at 23 we do have our early booking discounts and such but it really depends on when you're you're looking to travel now i want to just talk about solo travelers very quickly we have several different options for solo travelers some of our ships have solo staterooms that have no supplement 
We have a standard 25% supplement across Europe and the Mekong for our window cabins and our staterooms in Europe and our lead-in twin balconies on the Mekong. And um, in 21, if we open up enough time and later in the fall, you know, what have you, you might want to cruise. There are some specials there for solos. But again, reach out to your consultant and they can explain it to you better. But we love having solo guests. But solo doesn't mean you're necessarily traveling al alone. It might just mean you, you want your own stateroom. So uh, I, I travel with a lot of women and I know they like having their own stateroom. <laughs> so uh, that's a look at Europe for sure. <laughs> Shauna, absolutely amazing how many itineraries and you have brought back many, many memories for me. Um, what I want to talk about for a few minutes or want, want you to talk about is some of the exotics. Now, I am very, very envious because I know you did this Africa trip a number of years ago. Please tell us a little bit about more about Africa, a little bit more at Vietnam, Cambodia and Egypt are some of the exotics that you're doing. Yes, thanks, Lisa. We, you know, we know that most people want to start in Europe. It's a very typical area for river cruising, right? And coming into the car to these towns and cities along the river. But there's these incredible countries where there are rivers and these wonderful opportunities to really come in and explore these areas and do it in the comfort of a beautiful little river ship. And it's very, very special. So Africa, yes, I, I don't even have enough time to tell you all about it, but you know, we have this beautiful little ship, the Zambezi Queen that's on the Chobe River up in Chobe National Park, just about 40 minutes drive from Victoria Falls. And, you know, can you imagine 14 state rooms? You know, here I was right here, standing in here, watching all the wildlife, the, the elephants, the giraffes. And what's so unique is we take little river boats out and we safari by boat and go to shore. You don't get off the boat, but <laughs> we go through and, you know, sail around. And, and on safaris, a lot of times you're watching the animals go to the river, but on the boat, you're watching them they're coming to you to drink at the river. And it's just amazing. We also go and spend time in the park in safari jeeps as well. But being on the river, it's extra special. You see so many different things, especially when you know animals start chasing each other in the water and all sorts of things. And when the elephants go under and their little trunk comes up like a little, <laughs> you know, it's really uh, very, very special. But um, you can see here in the map, this is where Chobe, Chobe River is in here, four nights on this little ship. And then we have all these packages that go around that very special little river cruise. So whether it's in Cape Town and spending time down there and in the wine country and seeing so much of that history or you know, Johannesburg. We also go to Victoria Falls, of course, because we're right there. Then we have Kruger, we have the Serengeti, we have Gorongoro Crater. We even have Rwanda for um, the gorilla trekking and seeing the little, little tiny monkeys and stuff. So it's really an amazing program. And again, reach out and hear more. Vietnam and Cambodia and the Mekong, I've done this journey twice. It, to me, it's a very soul changing experience. I love coming in here. It was the last cruise I did a year ago before we had to stop cruising. And I was so happy I was able to go back. It's a seven night cruise on the Mekong River. And, you know, it goes through um, Vietnam and through Cambodia and then again through Vietnam, actually comes out of the Tibetan mountains and, and you just see life so different on the river than you do when you're traveling on land. And then of course we add in time in Ho Chi Minh City, the former Saigon. We have time in Siem Reap for the beautiful temples of Angkor Wat, a must see. And then even time up in Hanoi with a night on a beautiful little cruise ship in Ha Long Bay to see that beautiful UNESCO site of all those, you know, thousand islands with their own ecosystem and, you know, forests and, oh, it's just amazing. Um, so you can see our little ship there and this is just a little teaser to show you, but uh, again, a very uh, special journey. And we are there basically from January till April, and then again, kind of August through till 
till January. So you'll notice when you look sometimes at our itineraries, we're not there for months at a time, and it's probably because it's the weather's not the time to be there. So you can always, um, you know, see where the best weather is. And of course, reach out to your Expedia consultant. Egypt, we're very excited about because we're going next year in April. Uh, but our program, Alma Waterways, starts this September actually on the Nile, offering this incredible experience where you can come into Cairo and spend time seeing the pyramids and the Sphinx and all that beautiful city has to offer. We have optional tours into Dubai and spending time over there. You can come into Jordan and spend time in Amman and see Petra. And then we also have a four night uh, taste of Israel package where you see Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and old Jaffa, you go out to the Dead Sea, you see the Masada area, so very lovely. But the, the main package is the four nights in Cairo at the beautiful Four Seasons Hotel, flying down to Luxor to get on to our beautiful ship and uh, spending time, seven nights, here's the city of Cairo with the Nile coming through, one of the longest rivers in the world. It goes through 14 countries before it drops out into the Mediterranean Sea. And there is the Four Seasons right over here that we use. So we're right on the Nile. And then, uh, you know, you'll see so much more. So when you get on our beautiful new Amadalia, only 34 state rooms, and, uh, and then we sail on this river, you're in the world's largest outdoor museum as you see all these tombs and temples that line the Nile River, and an optional tour to Abu Simbel, which is something you don't want to miss. So and then we head back to Cairo. So beautiful, beautiful program. Wonderful. Oh, my God, Sean, it's so very, very exciting. It, tell us a little bit more about, you know, for people who want longer voyages, you've got your back to back promotions. Yes, you know, we've, you know, our all most of our river cruises are seven nights long in Europe, specifically. And we have a few that are a little bit longer 10, 11, 14 nights, but the majority are seven nights, but we find that people are really looking for longer journeys, you know, seven river journey, journey, 47 days, who knew right away, we had like 400 people pre register. <laughs> so, you know, people are looking for those longer journeys, they want to see more. And so we thought, well, why not do a combo, it doesn't even have to be back to back. But while you're over there, if you're going, if you're going to combine more cruises, let's give you a little incentive. So you can take a cruise, do some land, take a cruise, or you can do them back to back. We have, we figured it out that there's about 15,000 options of back to backs through Europe of things you can do and add and it's we have this matrix which is crazy so you know you can you can do that you can have a Rhone and a Portugal or you can do a Danube and a Sen or you know something that's naturally back to back so that's what our back to back voyages are uh, or I should say combination cruises. So every time you book the next cruise, you get another 10% off. And that combines with any promotion that we're offering you already, any past, and you become a past guest. So then you get a past passenger discount. So it just keeps getting better and better. And for 2022, everybody in Canada on a promo gets free gratuities as well. So that's an extra added bonus. And, uh, and we also launched a new referral program. I know, Lisa, you were asking me about this not long ago, and I say, stay tuned, because we're going to have some news. Uh, we know that we love our guests, you know, referring us to their friends and family. And so we've created a new program where we'll reward our guest for, you know, referring somebody new to us, and then the guest coming to us uh, will get um, a discount as well. So we have that. Now at Expedia, we have so many wonderful promotions. I don't even want to begin to go through them all. It gets far too confusing. And it really depends on which itinerary you're choosing, what time of year, the list goes on. So we, you know, I always say, please go and talk to your Expedia cruises consultant and they can narrow it down for you. They can help you find, you know, the very best value for the cruise that you're looking for and also help you maybe choose which one you might like because people always say to me Shauna which one should I take and I'm like they're all wonderful you know so that's when we can really have those conversations and see what it is you're really looking 
to experience with the history, the culture, the art, the food, the wine. I mean, it's so incredibly wonderful. Hey, Shauna, I think people also want a little bit of flexibility now because things are getting better, but they still are a little unsure. So you want to tell us a little bit about your travel waiver plus. Right. So uh, first of all, if you do have anybody who's, I mean, because we are, believe it or not, people, lots of people are booking. They might not be traveling right now, but they definitely are booking. It's, it's dreaming. It's planning. This is the perfect time. We are, you know, we have all our itineraries, as I say, right through till the end of 2023. And we've already moved all those people from 2020 and part, you know, early 21 into 2022. So things are very busy and things are filling up. So if anybody is booking in 2021 to perhaps sail this year, and then you decide, eh, I don't want to do that, or maybe you get closer and you're not quite ready to go, we'll move you over to the next year, no problem. That's not an issue. When you start booking into 22 and 23, where we believe we'll be sailing and things will be much better, much more sane. Um, we have always had this program, but it's become even more important now and it's our travel waiver plus. So don't think of it as insurance because it's not really an insurance plan. Insurance, you know, you can talk to Expedia Cruises. And what the travel waiver plus does for Europe in the Mekong is it allows you to um, purchase this at time of deposit. It's only 175 Canadian. And you can cancel your cruise, your travel with us for any reason, doesn't matter what the reason is, right up until 24 hours prior to the time your travel starts with us. Uh, if you have air, then that's included as well. And um, anything we can refund, we will. And anything that's in penalty, we will give you a future cruise credit to protect your money. So it's more of a peace of mind than it is in insurance. Thank you. And I think people, we need to know that because things are, are getting much better, as I said, but they are still unsure. Um, all right, Shauna, if you don't mind, we've got a couple questions to ask. Yes, um, so yes. from Kathy, how will shore excursions work now? Will they remain in a bubble only? Uh, shore, well, right now we don't know because we haven't started sailing yet. Um, we will be doing them. We'll do them small group. We'll have some private transfers. We'll have coaches where we'll have social distancing, things like that. But really, until we start traveling, it's not up to us. It's really up to the individual countries that we visit that will provide the mandates and the protocols. So we have to, of course, work with them, um, you know, CDC, World Health Organization, all of those things. So there's no one way for me to answer that because it's it kind of hasn't happened yet. I know you might be thinking of some of the things that the ocean liners are doing where they're not letting people go out of you know their tour groups. But in the river it's it's quite a bit different. So, you know, again, we'll wait till we're ready to sail and then we'll be able to tell everybody then exactly how that will all work. And, and on that and you mentioned it before even prior to COVID the groups that you did, the, uh, the there's so many options. And I remember when I, whenever I've been on an AMA cruise, my biggest problem is, but I want to do that one. And I want to do that one. And I want to do that one. And all the groups were very, very small. So I never felt any issue in terms of being crowded. Thanks, Shauna, for answering that. Uh, another question, what is the age demographics for AMA waterways? Approximate uh, age. Yeah, river cruising in general, when you're talking about river cruising, um, typically, our demographic for river cruising is anywhere from 50 to 90 till, till you can travel, no longer travel, right? And, you know, I said earlier that we do have some multi-generational families coming. Um, so sometimes the demographic goes a little bit younger. Uh, it's really starting to expand in its reach. But what I love, too, is that no matter how old people are, they're travelers they want to learn they're embracing these beautiful places that we're visiting so there's always such interesting conversations but typically it still remains a 55 you know plus uh demographic 
I also like to say young at heart because even people might be a little bit older, but they're active and they're healthy. And all right, thank you for, for sharing well, if that. You're, if you're traveling all the way from Canada when you're 85, you're young at heart, all right. <laughs> and, and we um, get a lot of people doing that. <laughs> Question from Eric. I would imagine days in port are longer than an average ocean cruise. Is that the case? Um, not necessarily, because sometimes we're there for the entire day and then overnight. Sometimes we're there half a day. It, it varies from itinerary to itinerary and the distance we need to travel. Um, so, you know, I know ocean cruises are a very, very different thing and they're covering a much greater distance than we ever are. So, you know, they've got to go out to sea and do their traveling again. We're just like down the road, right? So, so you know, you're constantly in scenery because it's just always around you. But, uh, you know, sometimes like the Danube itinerary, you know, that Upper Danube is really nice because it's a shorter distance. So you've got lots of time. Same with Bordeaux. You know, different itineraries bring different timelines. So uh, again, that's a conversation you we'd need to take further. And and definitely, unlike an ocean cruise, when you come into port, you literally walk off and you're in the middle of town. So it's not a Rome to Civitavecchia, you know, transfer type thing. <laughs> No. Uh, question may, and you might not be able to answer it again because you haven't started um, cruising yet. Will AMA require a COVID vaccine prior to boarding? I would imagine we are not at this time because we're not sailing yet. So um, it will really, I would think most of the airlines and probably a lot of the countries are going to ask for it. So of course we will just naturally have it because you'll have to have it to come over. Um, okay. we have not decided yet, but again, that will all come from the decisions made by governments and airlines and travel people and such. And there is a group in Europe, um, that specifically meets together. Uh, it's a board, um, and they talk about all the river, you know, things that are going on and such. I know Rudy's on that, uh, committee. And so they talk daily like literally daily and they're always getting more and more information so okay thank you thanks Shauna. one last question what kind of medical services provided on board well we don't have doctors on board um everybody is medically treated you know they're no first aid and such we have defibrillators but you have to remember we're always we're always right there at land so we're very very close to medical attention doctors hospitals um, so we don't, re you know, require having a doctor on board per se. Uh, it's a little bit different when we get out into Africa and the Mekong and such when you're a little bit more remote. So that's a, a bit of a different situation. But in Europe, it's very easy. We can have somebody there in no time. All right. Thanks, Shauna. Th that was amazing. And I've been very fortunate to have gone on a few AMA waterways cruises. So a lot of the pictures you were showing, I was like, my heart was beating. It's like, I want to go back there. So for all of you who joined us tonight, thank you. Although travel is currently paused, the world is getting uh, back to traveling again. And with all the great news about vaccines recently, it's not going to be that much longer. And it really is time to start. And when Shauna talked about uh, 2023, we have never seen any of the cruise lines open up their itinerary so quickly. And the reason for it is, is things are selling out 2022, 2023. And we are not hard sell, but I have to tell you, if you are thinking of going, you need to start planning at this point because everybody's been missing it and the pent up demand. Um, the new term is revenge travel. I have to make up for what I missed. So I want to thank you all for joining out. Please reach out to your consultants if you have any questions or want us to help you plan your next vacation. Remember to follow us on Facebook. Also check out our YouTube channel where this and all our other travel talks are recorded. And please join us next week. Our travel talk will be with Exodus Travels talking about adventure travel. And that'll be Thursday, March the 11th at 7 p.m. We do these travel talks every week. I can guarantee we're better than Netflix. So please tune in to us. I thank you for your joining us. I thank you for your past travels. 
and we look forward to doing future travels with us. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Thank you. Hi, Esther. I see you there. <laughs> Hi, Kevin.